Welcome to this podcast, which is the second of a series of podcasts about basal cell carcinoma. In the first podcast of this series, we described four main categories of BCC-related dermoscopic criteria and analyzed the pigmented structures. We proceed now with vessels, which are the most commonly seen dermoscopic structures of basal cell carcinoma. This may be one of the most widely recognizable criteria in dermoscopy. These are the so-called arborizing vessels of BCC. Please note that the term arborizing vessels is a metaphoric term, which encompasses many more characteristics than the observed branches. In detail, the typical arborizing vessels of BCC are stem vessels of large diameter, which are branched to thinner vessels and finally to even thinner terminal capillaries. Arborizing vessels project sharply in focus and typically cross the center of the lesion. Here is another example of typical arborizing vessels. However, in the real clinical setting, as in the real life, deviations from the perfect pattern are very common, and below you can see some representative examples. The vessels of this basal cell carcinoma are far from stem large diameter vessels. However, there is no doubt that they are linear in morphology and branching. Again here, the vessels are not large, they do not cross the center of the lesion and are not in perfect focus. However, they are always linear and branched. This BCC is even less typical in terms of vascular pattern and please ignore the vascular structures of the surrounding skin. The tumor vessels are far from typical, but still it can be seen that they are linear and somehow ramified. In contrast to the pigmented structures, linear or arborizing vessels of BCC are not specific for the diagnosis, since they can be seen also in other tumors, especially of adnexal origin, such as this sebaceous tumor. The second type of vessels that can be seen in basal cell carcinoma are the so-called short, fine telangiectasias that typically characterize superficial basal cell carcinoma. These vessels are not prominent, not in focus, and might be seen either in the center or at the periphery of the tumor. However, they are still always linear. And this is a very useful information for the clinical practice for the differential diagnosis between superficial BCC and other clinically similar entities such as Bowen's disease and psoriasis. This is because both Bowen's disease and psoriasis display not linear but dotted vessels, larger in Bowen's disease, the so-called glomerular vessels, or smaller in psoriasis. Instead, superficial BCC displays few as in this case, or more, vessels of linear morphology. In conclusion, ves vessels are very frequently seen in basal cell carcinoma and are always linear, either focused and of large diameter, or short and thinner. Ulceration is also a very common dermoscopic criterion of BCC. In it can be seen as a solitary, relatively large ulcerated area of yellow or reddish color, or as more than one smaller ulcerations. Ulceration is not a specific finding, since it can be present in several other tumors, especially squamous cell carcinoma, which is the most common differential diagnosis of BCC. For example, the differential diagnosis between the BCC on the left and the SCC on the right is not based on the ulcerated area, but on the translucent hue and the linear branching vessels of the B BCC and the white circles of the squamous cell carcinoma, respectively. When the ulceration is large and covers all of the tumor surface, then obviously a definite diagnosis is impossible. In addition to the ulcerative areas, more superficial erosions are also common in basal cell carcinoma, especially in the superficial subtype. These erosions are usually multiple and might be seen either in the center or at the periphery of the tumor, being often the only reliable criterion for the diagnosis of superficial BCC. 
Here is another typical superficial basal cell carcinoma displaying a few short linear vessels and multiple small erosions. Finally, a not so often described in papers but very often dermoscopically seen criterion of basal cell carcinoma is its translucent hue. The translucency is traditionally known to represent also a clinical characteristic of basal cell carcinoma, but as it is reasonable, dermoscopy significantly enhances its visualization. In superficial basal cell carcinoma, a shiny whitish hue has been described to be present in the majority of the cases. However, the characteristic translucent hue is better seen in nodular tumors like the examples that follow. Often, the presence of other criteria, such as the vessels in this case, and also in this case, are anyhow suggestive of basal cell carcinoma. But there are really featureless tumors like this one, where the translucent hue might represent the only diagnostic clue. In conclusion, dermoscopy can be considered as the ultimate tool for the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma.